Hello and thank you for joining us today. My name is Ella and I work at the Laurel Branch, which is better known as the Dinosaur Branch. You can see I have one of my friends here to help us. And I'm actually the librarian that does the little dinosaur dioramas. You might have might have seen them on the social media pages. They have escaped the library while we're closed and they're out wandering around having adventures. So if you're interested, definitely feel free to give us a follow and see what they're up to. But today I wanted to show you how I actually make some of the miniatures for those displays. And I'm going to focus on food today. So we are going to be making a little bag of chocolate chips in case they want to make some cookies. Got some rice aroni, which is a good staple. Little pack of Velveeta sandwiches for when they get hungry. And then I have some cans for them as well. I have a can of black bean soup and another of just veggies. So today I'm going to show you how I make all of these. I promise they're really easy. But some of the things that you're going to want to use. Normally I would have a hot glue gun with me, but I actually don't have one where I am. So I've just been using this masking tape. You are going to want a pair of scissors. These are just some kid scissors. They work fine. You want to make sure they're really sharp. If you do have nicer scissors, always break those out, but for now I'm going to be using these. I am using an X-Acto knife, but you do not have to use one. I've also used either the scissors or a kitchen knife, and that's worked fine for me. You're also going to want something to use as a base for your miniatures. For, so for the cans, I'm using a hot glue stick that I'll be cutting, and then for the boxes, I'm using just some Scrabble pieces that I have lying around. So I think that's all we need to get started, so let's begin. For our chocolate chip cookies, you can actually see that I have already used them in a miniature, uh, but that's okay because I can actually use it again. And what I'm looking for is, you can see on the package how the brand label is very large, um, and sometimes on the packages they will have kind of miniature versions of it. So already I can see that up here, we flattened it. That is literally exactly the same label as is over here. And with miniatures, it doesn't matter as much um, how close you get it to the actual packaging as long as the idea is there. So for our small bag of chocolate chips, it will just be enough for us to kind of have the label. We don't need to have a picture of a cookie. If you can get a small picture of a cookie, that's always really nice, but I wouldn't stress out about it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to cut along here, kind of like you can see I've already done at the bottom. And I like to cut really wide just in case I make a mistake, which is often. So I'm just going to cut all the way over here and just cut all the way down here. This is way too big for the size that I'm going for, but again, I don't want to have to throw the package away and buy more chocolate chips, although that's not a bad thing. So I'm just going to put the original package over here to remind myself what it looks like, but this is going to be great. So I it was rolled like this. I'm just going to roll it a little bit more so you can see the label, and I'm going to reinforce that crease. And I'm going to check the back. So for here, what you can do if you want it to look more realistic is you can actually just cut the front part and then cut maybe over here where it's all yellow so that you can't see that this is actually not just a miniature bag. It was cut from a little bag. Um, you won't see those huge words in comparison to the size of your bag. I'm not going to do that today, but that is something that you can do if you want your miniatures to look more realistic. But for me, this is fine. The dinosaurs don't care. So again, just going to reinforce that crease and I'm going to cut it with a little bit more confidence. Again, it's still probably too large, but slow and steady. All right, so that's starting to look more like a little bag of chocolate chips. So now what I'm going to do is actually just seal the bag. And for this, I'm going to use tape. 
Um, I have some packing tape with me. It does not have to be packing tape, but what I've found with material like this that's shiny on the inside, it just melts the material if you use hot glue. And um, when I've used some kind of crafting glue, it doesn't stay. So for this, just taping it is fine. So I've got a little piece of tape right here and I'm just going to line up the edges and close it. All right, so I have it taped on one side and I'm gonna just fold it over. I'm gonna trim the end off there. Awesome, so now it's closed on one side and I'm gonna do the same thing on the top edge. So I've got an even bigger piece of tape And the same thing, I'm going to line it up, and then I'm just going to push it over to seal it. And it's sticking out a little bit over here, so I'm just going to trim that off. And I'm going to actually just cut a little bit off the end. Perfect. So from here you have a few options. Uh, none of them are better or worse than any of the others, but you can leave it open if you're planning to display it as kind of like chocolate chips are coming out, which you can make from beads or with clay, or I've even done it with Play-Doh. Um, or what you can do is you can put either some paper in here or even some of the scraps from the bag. Find a scrap. And just kind of keep stuffing them in there and then seal it the same way we did the other two sides. So that way it's kind of not as flat you have a little dimension here um, and I think I'm gonna go with that second option of just kind of putting scraps in here and then sealing it all the way so I'm just gonna cut up actually pieces of the bag The other thing about miniatures is you're going to drop a lot of stuff. So small scale, the things are tiny. They do sell um, small tweezers, but I don't think those are necessary. All right, so I've got some scraps in there. It's still a little flat. I'm going to probably just cut up the rest of this and put it in there. And you don't want these to be too small. You're not trying to make like confetti or anything. It's actually better if it has a little bit of a bounce. You can also, if you are doing this to do some small cooking, which I've seen online. You can also get actual chocolate chips and cut them down to size and put them in there. Um, for me, I don't do that just because the dinosaurs don't eat. Um, so it seems kind of pointless, but that is something I've seen people do. All right, so I can just get this all in there. And I'm just gonna seal it. Oh. I'm gonna seal it with a better piece of tape. A little, it's already gonna be too big, but that's fine. And I'm gonna fold it over. Awesome. So I did not seal it or I did not fill it maybe to the capacity that it should have been filled, but you can see that it's not flat anymore. It looks like there is something in there. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that it's going to work for my purpose, which is again, the dinosaur. So I would consider this a success.
All right, so the next miniature we're gonna make is actually a small can of sweet peas. Normally I would just rip off the label, but this is still full of sweet peas, so I'm not gonna do that. And besides, I've seen, again, we're looking for the label that says Green Giant. If you turn it around, there is a small little label. So I'm just gonna kinda try to rip off this part and see if I can just get it off that way without ripping the entire label, which might not be possible, but All right, I'm going to try to rip from the bottom. And it looks like I might just have to take the entire label off, which happens. Sometimes you get excited for a craft. All right, all right, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the part of the label that I'm going to use, which is this part. And later what I'm going to do is just tape this back on. You don't really need the box or the, um, you don't really need this part of the label. I just want to still know what's in the can so I don't have a bunch of these mysterious cans lying around the house. So I will do that later. But for now, we still have this great label. So for cans, what I actually use for the base of it, because we can't, like the cookies, we can't just kind of fold it over, it's not gonna hold its shape. I actually will use glue sticks. And I found this out, I bought all these glue sticks and they're the wrong size for my glue gun. So I still have them, I have a ton of them. And so what you do is actually just kind of cut them and then you can see I can wrap it around and it'll make a nice little can. It depends really heavily on the size of the scale that you're going for. These work really well for the dinosaurs just because I like how big they are because some of the dinosaurs, as you can see, are a little bit bigger. If you are making something for, say, a Barbie, you might want to use something even thicker. Uh, for example, I do just have this paint. When the paint is done, I might use the top as a can just because it's a little bit bigger. But again, this really depends on the scale that you're going for. If you're going for something even smaller, what you can use is a straw or something like that, which I usually don't work in scales that small, but that is a possibility. Broken pencils also make really good bases. So things like that, anything around the house. And as far as painting it is concerned, you have two options that I kind of go back and forth between. So here are kind of what I use as coloring tools. I have actual paint, which I got from a craft store, and this is kind of a metallic silver col color. Open it up so you can see. So that obviously makes a very good uh, paint color for cans. But ideally, oops. Ideally what I use when I can is actually nail polish. And this sounds silly, but hear me out. So nail polish is great, one, because it comes in a variety of colors that are very hyper-specific. Like this is called Here to Stay, which doesn't actually help you with coloring, but you can kind of see them through the container, which is great. So you can hold it up to your crafts or think about your crafts and you can kind of decide which one is best. It comes in, like I said, a variety of colors. So I have seen some metallic silver which I have at home specifically for painting purposes. I don't have them here. The other thing that's awesome about them is that because they kind of harden after you paint them, you don't have to add a lot of the times a finishing coat. It is enough just to kind of paint them with the nail polish and they dry really, really quickly. So instead of kind of waiting around for this to set, I can just put some nail polish on it and then I'm done. So I have, I actually have, this is something I painted before for a previous project, and this is just glue. This is just a glue stick that I have painted with some dark nail polish because I wanted it to look a little bit older. I'm going to add some rusting to it, some little like splotches of red, which is great. But for now, this is kind of what it looks like. Like I said, it dries really quickly. It does still have that kind of shiny look. You can get nail polish in matte colors in case you don't want it to look shiny, but that's what I wanted for this. 
So um, that's how you can paint kind of your cans to look like cans. And likewise, if you're painting something like a jelly jar, what you can do is just paint a ring around the top to show kind of like the lid. And then the bottom, you can do a little bit of the color that you're looking for and white, and it makes a white kind of wash. And the clear is really good because it makes it look like a clear container. So this is great. This is what I'm going to use. I'm going to move that aside. Move that aside. All right, so I, again, really like using these, um, these glue sticks because they're really flexible. And sometimes when you're trying to make bases, um, I anyway will hurt myself when I'm trying to cut them. So this is good because it's a, kind of a soft material. So if I slip or something and break it, it's not going to cause me pain. And today what I'm going to be using to cut it is my X-Acto knife from college. Um, unless you're going to be using this a ton, I don't really recommend going out and buying one just because it is a pretty specific tool. And I have used kitchen knives in a pinch, and they work just fine. If you have stronger hands than I am, I have, you can always use uh, scissors to cut it, but I am going to use this X-Acto knife. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that aside for now, and I'm going to cut the label out. And again, I'm going to cut bigger than I want. And I'm just going to compare it to the glue stick. Alright, so I should be good to just cut it right where the words are, which is awesome. Because for some reason, cans, because you can see more of them, I don't like when they have the words. That kind of give away that it's not an actual tiny container. And I... Depending on what it says down here, I will sometimes keep this, but I don't really feel like keeping that, so I'm just going to cut it off. All right, and as you can see, that's not completely even, but with miniatures, that's kind of okay. That's not as big of a deal as it would be for larger projects because it's such a small scale, no one's really gonna notice. So, that's what this can's eventually gonna look like. And I actually kind of like this because you can't tell that it's supposed to be sweet peas. It could just be any vegetable in a can. So I'm going to loosely measure where I wanna cut. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger than what I want. And then with my superior strength, I'm just gonna push this down until it breaks. Oops, perfect. All right, there you have it. A little uneven, but again, no one's gonna be looking that closely. And so now I'm going to get a little piece of tape. I'm going to get a little piece of tape. And I'm just going to tape this around. And this is the part where you could, if you wanted to paint this, to make it kind of more can looking. So with the other project, this is when you would, you would kind of do that. So then at the top, you would see it looks more like a can. I'm not going to do that now, but that's definitely the part where you would do that. So I'm just going to tape this on, assuming the sizing is okay. It looks fine. It 
It's not perfect, but I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna cut off the extra here. All right, awesome. So this is our little can of, at this point, vegetables. Who knows what's really in it? Uh, if I was doing this for the dinosaurs, this would be fine. If I was doing this for a personal project, I would probably trim the bottom a little bit more just so it was more even, but the dinosaurs don't care. So this is gonna be great. So there's our little can of vegetables. And I think it turned out nice. So this next one, I already know, does not have a little Belveda label anywhere. You, They can usually be found on the flaps. So I usually check the top and the bottom and this has a label on it, but it's not the one I'm looking for. Oh, it does have one. Um, but for this, this isn't the scale that I'm looking for. This is a little bit too big and this will depend on what scale you're looking for. So for you, this might be enough just to kind of cut and put on some extra cardboard as a backing and then you have a pretty big box. Uh, but for me, this is too big. But what this box does have is some advertisements for some other uh, products by this. So I'm actually just going to use these. And what I'm going to use as a backing are some old Scrabble pieces. So I've been hoarding these, or I've been collecting these for a long time. They, at this point, don't, don't go to anything. So I usually use them if either I want something to look more solid or if I don't feel like making the cardboard backing. So these are, I want to say a little too big. Yeah, just, just a tiny bit too big. I think I'm still going to try to use them anyway. And what I'll do is actually just cut further up and use them that way. So I think that's what I'm going to do. This is some hard cardboard. So now I have these two small pictures of containers and I'm going to actually try to use both of them. I'm going to cut this off because I don't want it. And I'm just going to try to cut really long but staying really close to the packaging um, and I'm hoping to actually just wrap them around but we'll see how that works out. So as I said before, I don't measure, I don't, you know, label things. I just kind of go for it. If that makes you nervous, then don't do it that way. <laughs> don't give yourself unnecessary stress. So if you want to pull out a ruler and draw a line and just make sure that you are actually going to cut along the packaging, then definitely do that. Don't stress yourself out for nothing. All right, so this is kind of what I wanted. I'm gonna wrap it around to see what it looks like. B for Velveeta. All right, so this doesn't look exactly like the box does. Um, I actually, you know, surprise, surprise, could have left more on the sides, but you know, if you saw this in a dollhouse, I hope that you wouldn't go up and say, oh, well, that doesn't look exactly right. I think this is going to be close enough. So um, I'm pretty happy with it. That being said, we do have one more that I have not cut with Reckless Abandon. So I can try to make it a little bit closer to what it's going to look like. All right, let's go for it. There we go. A little bit of a buffer. All 
Let's see how I did. Oh, a little bit too much of a buffer. All right. I'm going to cut some of this off. Take two. Oh, so much better. All right, so, you know, I will be the first to admit this looks a little bit better. So that's fair. And so what I would normally do now is I would use hot glue after I've folded it and kind of reinforced the creases. One crease, two creases. A weird half crease. So the bottom was already cut because of the flap. There we go, and four creases. So normally what I would do at this point after trimming some of the excess is I would hot glue it down. And I actually do not have a hot glue gun with me, but I do have some tape. So just kind of to show you what it would look like when it's finished, I'm just gonna tape it down and show you. I will also tape down the smaller one. And this one has the flap at the bottom in a better place, so it's a little bit easier. All right, and taping it is really gonna be as simple as I'm gonna get some tape to kind of reinforce the back so it doesn't slide off. And I'm not cutting tape on camera because I have a massive packing tape roll and it's difficult to deal with. I'm not just magically producing tape from my own person. All right, so this is the small one. So I'm gonna do the underside first and it's a little too big. So I'm just gonna trim some more off. I'm gonna put this on the square. And I want this part to be underneath, so I'm going to tape that down. And then Get a little bit more tape. Oh, and it's a little too long. Happens to the best of us. I'm just gonna put some tape along there. And there we go, there's our little box right there. Again, it's not perfect. I think it's pretty good. But let's see how this one turns out. I'm just gonna roll this tape here. And I'm actually just I'm not going to put any on the front. I'm just going to put some on the back. And 
And this is the part where if you wanted to, you could print out or draw a little kind of nutritional fact label and put it on the back. You could also cut some flaps and put them on the side so it looks like a completely closed box, but you know, I'm, I'm happy with how they turned out. The other thing that I feel is sometimes important with miniature making is that it is definitely sometimes quantity over quality. So if I'm trying to fill a pantry scene, I don't have time to make everything look exactly perfect. So I might take my best looking one and put that in front. This one won't even stand up. It's fine. And then put a bunch of them in the back that maybe don't look as good. So you can always display your kind of front and center one as the best one. And people will just assume that they all look that good. And sometimes they don't. And that's all right. So let me clear my workspace. All right, so I have a bean label that came from a can, and I am unfamiliar with this brand, but uh, it is some black beans that were in there. So again, I'm going to use this really tiny version of the label, and I'm actually really excited about this, not because of the label, which is fine, but because this recipe that is lovingly printed underneath of it says the word bean. So I'm going to be able, hopefully, to cut this entire thing out, and I might even keep the black bean soup as a whole label so the can will be not only black beans but maybe black bean soup. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Again, I'm going to use a glue stick as the base and I'm going to cut it maybe a little bit bigger because I want the words to be in there, but I'm going to start by cutting the words out first. As always, I'm going really big. Because you can always take more off, but it's very difficult to put more on. It's not impossible, it's just difficult. So, there is my little label. I'm going to grab the glue stick just to kind of see what it will look like. And so now, see, I'm unsure. Because that is a very tall can. And I don't know if I like that. I think I'm going to go ahead and do it, but I reserve judgment for later. I'm going to trim it a bit more. And I'm going to trim it a little further on the left than I did on the right because I know for a fact that I didn't want the words on the side. And I have enough on the side where when I roll it, if I need to roll it a little bit more, this way I'm going to be fine. So now comes the fun part where I attempt to use my superior strength to cut this glue stick. Same glue stick as before. I'm just going to line it up to see where I might want it. Push it down to make the little crease there so I can see where I'm going to be cutting and then just kind of push down. I am getting stronger with each take because that took less time than before. And you can see it's it's a little uneven, and even for me, that's a little much. I'm just going to take my scissors and trim it. This won't matter as much if you're doing like a pantry scene and you have them all glued to the shelf, but I do not. They're usually just kind of near the dinosaurs, so I want it to be as level as possible. So I'm going to grab a little piece of tape, like before, and I'm actually going to 
tape down the part that I don't want to show first. And make sure it's lined up. And see, I'm already just going to flip it over so that the nice pretty sides on top. And I'm just going to roll it around. And again, make sure it's level. There we go. There we go, a little black bean soup. Now I might trim a little bit more off the bottom later, but I'm not gonna worry about that now. I also might put a little piece of tape up here because I see that it's a little bit ripped. And again, uh, before I tape the label on, if I wanted to paint it, I would definitely do that. Uh, but for now, I think it looks fine. All right, so I have, as you can see, already finished off the Spanish rice. No need to thank me, I'm just doing my job. And it got a little beat up, but I won't try to worry about that. So as you can see, it does have a tiny advertisement for other rice -a products, but for the scale that I use, this is just too small. I can't use this, uh, which sucks. And there are no advertisements on the back. And on the top flaps, there are just the words rice -aroni. But what you might have noticed is on the side, there's the word rice -aroni and then a little picture of the product. And so this is actually what I'm going to use. It's not going to look quite like this, but it's actually going to look very similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. And then I will use, if I can find them, there we go. I will use my handy dandy scrabble pieces to make the base. So I think I'm only going to need two, but I'll leave the third one there just in case. As always, I'm going to cut a little bit bigger than I need. And I'm going to trim off the top just because I already know I won't use it. Awesome. So, it's not going to be completely perfect. It is going to be a little bit along the sides. And from a marketing perspective, that's a bad idea, but from a miniature perspective, it's fine. And this is what hopefully eventually it will look like when I'm done. So I'm not feeling super confident with just kind of winging it with the cutting because I do only have one of these boxes. So I'm going to tape these together. And I'll add a bit on the other side as well. That's what my box will look like. And then just going to fold this around
I'm going to press down where I think the end might be. All right, so it feels like right there where you can kind of see the crease starting to form. That's where I'm going to cut because it's flush on the top. And I'm just going to trim up, trim up the ends on the side. Awesome. So this would be where I use my hot glue gun if I had it here, which I don't. So I'm just going to use a lot of tape. Just going to make sure that's right in the center. I'm going to Hold this really tightly while I roll it around. And you might have to push it down. And that tape's a little too big. do is I'm just going to add an extra piece of tape just for strength in the back. And there you go. There is our little box of rice aroni next to the original. And if you wanted to, what you could do as well, if you don't really like the way that this looks, you could always cut off the rice aroni part and have more of the picture and it just say Spanish rice. But I really wanted it to say rice aroni because I really like rice aroni. So for me, this is what I wanted it to look like. So this is what we ended up with today. All of our little food products. I think we did a great job. I'm very proud of us. I would love to see if you either had these products at home and followed along with me or if you had other fun food products that you were able to make miniatures of, I encourage you to tag the library, PDC MLS, on our social medias if you did end up doing this, and show me what you made for your dinosaurs or your Barbies. And if there were any tips that you learned along the way that you'd like to share with me, if not, you can follow the dinosaurs on their journey again on all of the social medias. They have escaped the library, if you haven't seen, and they've been wandering around as the branches are closed, and they will return to the Laurel Library once we are safely open. But for now, I think maybe they'll make some chocolate chip cookies. If you liked crafting along, the library does have a series of crafternoons that you're welcome to join in on, and they are going to be posted on all of our social medias as well. So thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you have a great day.